Is the president still comfortable with him, Sam Clovis, serving in the administration? I'm not aware that any change would be necessary at this time. That was White House Press Secretary today before NBC News reported that Sam Clovis has already been questioned last week by Robert Mueller's team and testified before the grand jury investigating that case. Joining us now, Ezra Klein, editor-at-large at Vox and host of the podcast, The Ezra Klein Show. Also with us, former U.S. Attorney Barbara McQuaid, professor of law at the University of Michigan. She's also an NBC News and MSNBC legal contributor. And Jonathan Capehart, opinion writer for The Washington Post and an MSNBC contributor is joining us. Ezra, I'm sorry that we're not going to have that Senate confirmation hearing next week in the Agriculture Committee. It, it is inconceivable to me that this nominee will be submitted for questioning by that committee now. I was looking forward to that uh, particular <laughs> hearing. Yeah, so this, this is a, a growing disaster for the Trump administration. And I think that the particular nature of the disaster revolves around uncertainty. We don't know, and Donald Trump doesn't know, what Bob Mueller knows. We don't know who Bob Mueller has talked to, and Trump doesn't know that either. We don't know who the people Bob Mueller is talking to have talked to and what they are telling Bob Mueller. And one way that bureaucracies and large systems of people begin to collapse is when they can't trust each other. The Trump administration already had a re very, very serious problem with leaks. It already had a very serious problem with infighting. Now what it has is a serious problem with people flipping, potentially, or at least testifying on the people they've been working with, talking to, or were working with previously. It is very hard to run an effective executive branch under those circumstances. Barbara McQuaid, the, the message that I got from the special prosecutor yesterday was, you don't know what I'm doing, and you don't know what I'm doing next. Uh, it seems to me that's exactly the message he wanted to deliver to us. Yeah, I think that's right, and I think Robert Mueller has the reputation for being airtight. I know there have been uh, leaks, but I, I suspect those are coming out of defense camps or maybe congressional committees and not Robert Mueller's team. But I think he also sent a message that uh, about a couple of other things. One, I will prosecute people who lie to me. Two, if you cooperate, you will get a deal. And three, uh, Paul Manafort, uh, we know a lot of people in the inner circle. We've identified them by title, but not by name. You know who they are, too. And if you want to cooperate, now is the time. Jonathan Capehart, uh, the, 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 uh, the Sam Clovis part of this story uh, is, is really striking, uh, that, that Donald Trump could let someone like this uh, rise so high, especially after he learned about those emails, after he hired Clovis, uh, but he believed he needed Clovis for the Iowa campaign. Clovis is an expert on, on Iowa politics. But here he is now, stuck with this undersecretary nominee who he can't possibly let go into a confirmation hearing. Right. I mean, hiring Sam Clovis, despite those emails, shows a, a man who is going to do anything possible to win the Iowa caucuses. But as we're seeing right now, when you're pulling in people um, out of a fit of desperation, um, they can come back and bite you. Um, what's really interesting here is that we are now 48 hours into Mueller's America. And everyone had heard about this in, this indictment that was going to come down, and everyone figured it was Manafort or or um, or Michael Flynn. What no one knew and what no one expected was the guilty plea by George Papadopoulos. And then today we find out that Sam Clovis, not <laughs> Sam Clovis, is not only the campaign official um, that's obliquely referenced in one of the in one of the documents yesterday. Yesterday, but has already spoken to the grand jury um, in the Mueller investigation. If you're um, if you're in the White House right now, as previously said, and you now find out that George Papadopoulos and now Sam Clovis are two people who have talked to the grand jury. One has already pleaded guilty. As Ezra said, this already adds um, a. I don't know, a free song of freak out in the West Wing about who's next, what's possibly going to happen next. And Mueller, as was previously said, is not someone to be trifled with. And Ezra, the, the uh, Sam Clovis is someone who uh, the president is, of course, uh, 
going to have a lot of trouble distancing himself from. I mean, I guess we'll wait for tomorrow. I mean, surely tomorrow uh, the White House will act as if they don't know who he is and, and try to destroy all pictures of him uh, being anywhere in <laughs> Donald Trump's presence. I mean, th this one's going to be an awful ha lot harder to erase uh, from uh, Trump campaign history as they're trying to do uh, with Papadopoulos. Is it? They tried to distance themselves from Paul Manafort. They yeah, said that's he was right. a guy yeah. who served for a very limited time yeah. in a very limited capacity. He was a campaign chair. Yeah. There was another period when they tried to distance. Um, I mean, there is nobody they've not been willing to try and distance from, no matter how close into the inner circle. So look, I, I don't think that the boundary here for the Trump campaign is telling credible, is making credible statements about what is going on. I don't think that the binding constraint is saying something that actually holds up to anyone. I think the real question is, did, did Clovis know anything, right? Are the people they're talking to, who does know what, and what do they actually know about it? The, the thing that is tricky here is that in the midst of this, you somehow have to keep running administration, and you have to begin figuring out what you know. You actually have to begin doing the internal work to find out what might Bob Mueller know, what do you need to be prepared for. Donald Trump and the people he's uh, assembled around him are not really capable of doing that in a calm, systematic way that doesn't scare people, uh, that doesn't scare the staff, that actually gets honest answers answers out of people. And that's going to be a real problem. They're not going to be capable of doing the preparatory work to be uh, ahead of this that they need to do to just be able to, to not end up in a completely reactive state at all times. Barbara, uh, we saw the, uh, the release documents today, uh, basically, for, for uh, Paul Manafort uh, and, and his associate, uh, Rick Gates. Uh, they, Manafort is facing 15 years, eight months in prison. Uh, Gates is facing 12 years, seven months in prison. And the prosecutors mentioned that, mentioned the heaviness of the potential prison sentence as one of the reasons, contributing to several other reasons, why these guys might be flight risks. Uh, and, and it seems to me the message in, in that filing being released to other potential defendants here is this is how it's going to go for you. This is what it's going to feel like if you find yourself in the Manafort position. Yeah, I think that's right. You know, of course, they have an obligation to advise the court of all of those factors, uh, like the strength of the evidence, the potential penalties, and other reasons that might give an incentive to Manafort and Gates to flee. But I also think they put it in a written pleading. It is out there, and so it served the additional purpose of putting on other, others on notice that these are serious charges and that other charges may await others who don't cooperate. It's really interesting that if that report is true that Sam Clovis has testified before the grand jury, uh, he may have done so under... Uh, immunity if he went forward and actually testified mm -hmm. and may have testified truthfully, which also should cause people to have some concerns if he has information that could be damaging to them. Uh, Barbara, just underline that point for us again, the possibility of immunity. If the president's watching, I want to give him a chance to think <laughs> about that tonight, uh, that, that, that having someone like Sam Clovis, who is implicated in these emails with Papadopoulos, uh, that having him testify to the grand jury at this stage uh, would be something that his, his lawyer would advise him against doing without certain kinds of protections. I think that's right. I think it's most likely that his lawyer would advise him to uh, invoke his Fifth Amendment privilege against testifying if he were called to testify before a grand jury. And then the only way that that uh, gets cast aside is if the prosecutor says, we'll grant you an immunity, and then you can get a compulsion order from the court requiring someone to testify. And the, the exchange is that none of those statements can be used against you. They can be used against others, however, and can be used to develop other leads in the investigation. So it suggests to me that it's quite probable probable that he did testify and that he shared information. And uh, if he has information that's damaging to other members of the campaign, they uh, are likely very concerned about that. And so, Jonathan Capehart, uh, Senator Stabenow's staff, taking notes this evening during the broadcast, have just written down her first question to Sam Clovis in the confirmation hearing that will never happen. Do you currently have an immunity agreement with the special <laughs> prosecutor? And if, let's just say, because, you know, the new normal is not normal, let's say the Clovis nomination does go through <laughs> and Senator Stamino does get to ask that question. There will be a collective holding of breath in Washington and especially in the White House to, to hear what that answer is. And I think in all of this and everything that we've been discussing and everything that has happened since yesterday morning, what we're seeing 
is an administration and a president that has treated the Constitution as a flimsy piece of paper and something that they could that they could ignore or just willfully um, plow their way through with Mueller and his investigation and what we've seen so far they are hitting up against the wall that really is the Constitution I just want to leave this note for the president and Sam Clovis tonight because they're first timers at this they might not realize this but uh, no nominee in history has ever made it through a Senate confirmation hearing claiming the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> Ezra Klein, Barbara McQuaid, and Jonathan Capehart, thank you all for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.